G'day hobbyists, I just want to do a quick video talking about the um, plastic scenery booster for Mantix The Walking Dead, which is uh, the cars as well as some barricades and supply counters. Well, mostly what I wanted to talk about was the uh, weathering and sort of environment, uh, environment effects I wanted to put on the uh, vehicles. Now, I've already painted up two lots of um, the scenery booster because I got one with the, uh, two with a Kickstarter. And um, I painted one up just clean and normal, so that's, you know, early on in the uh, zombie apocalypse, you know, a few crash cars. And the second batch, I painted up with uh, some rust, some more blood, and even a lot of dirt, just to try a few techniques, and I want to talk through them with you. So, hope you enjoy. Alright, so here we have just a clean car. Bit of a sma bit smashed in the front there. Now I use a bit of a technique where I paint the uh, glass in a sort of cartoony manner. I just go a bit of black, dark blue, light greys and whites, that sort of thing. As well as with the lights, they're also just blue to white glass, because this is a sort of a cartoony look. You can do the glass in other colours if you like. I've just sort of got smashed front headlight there. And I've got the um, tail lights done in orange and red for a bit of realism and just sort of cartoonness. I also paint the uh, paint the license plates. Yeah. It's sort of a it's sort of a cartoony look because it's just solid plastic, these are uh, vehicles. So there's it's not like um, it's not like say a die cast kit where you can you've got clear windows and an interior. So I went with this sort of cartoony look which sort of fits with the look of the models and stuff. Now a simple thing is Citadel blood effects or Blood for the Blood God, which I just put on some vehicles to add a bit more of an effect, like, you know, this car's smashed up because it's hit something, someone's been injured or whatever, or it's run over something, they've tried to go for the door, someone's tried to go for the door. So I, I reckon, in my mind, the car is smashed, has smashed into a zombie, a bit of a big heavy one by the looks of it. That's caused all the damage to the front. And then the car's also gone over the zombie, but the zombie's still not quite dead and has tried to reach for the car door or something, or maybe someone's been injured after getting out and tried to get back into the car. Alright, so here we can see some of the rust effects I've put on the car. I've I painted this car silver because it's sort of an older looking style of car, and you see a lot of silver cars going around, so that's what I went with, and I thought the silver would help show up the rust effects nicely. So in the damaged areas, I've put some rust effect, which was is just me painting. There's, there isn't a rust effect paint I used or pigment. This is just a bit of bright orange dry brushed over it to give that look. But I also used a bit of orange sort of watered down because if you look at real rust, and that's the best reference you can get, re real rust, you'll see bright orange specks, particularly sort of around water, like if there's water drips or something. And then you'll see the sort of darker, more corroded rust from sort of aged, aged rust. So I sort of Want a bit of a mix here, like it's water and damage has caused this rust to occur. So dry brush with a bit of orange, uh, dry brush around a bit, a little bit of watered down orange, or smear it, smear it around a bit. And then I wash it with a bit of um, uh, brown wash to sort of darken and shade all of that and make it look like darker corroded rust in the sort of deeper recesses and make it look like um, there's older layers of rust beneath the uh, fresh rust. And that's sort of look with Ariton has turned out pretty good for this car. And for this uh, final white car, another sort of strong contrasting uh, effect ra rather than silver to rust, this is clean white to really dirty. And um, I sort of figured bits of leaf and just, you know, dust in the wind and dirt is settled on the car and um, leaves have rotted and stuff and it's been that long that, you know, grass and bits of sort of Plants start to grow in the on the front of the car. There's meant to be this big dent and such. So a lot of dirt has settled into there, and then grasses start to grow. Then patches of leaves and dirt on the roof has started to grow grass, and also the back has started to have grass grow on it. And all I did there was put some pigment. Um, well, some I put some texture paint, uh, Sterling mud, and I dry brushed it a bit with. Um, a light khaki and a wash with brown wash and then I put patches of grass in sort of give the effect of a very dirty car that's been there a long time. Alright so here we have some of the uh, supply tokens and barricades from this uh, scenery booster. Now 
it looks like a lot to take on, but it's, it was actually didn't take me very long to paint this stuff. Typically, I um, base coat and then wash and then dry brush, and that usually gives you three sort of three uh, three levels of brightness or darkness. So three three levels. I, I sort of refer to them as. That's usually pretty good. Uh, for for tabletop standard, you know, I mean, this isn't going to be in a painting competition. So I also I also try to make sure that the uh, certain colors, like you could have cardboard and wood as very similar colors, but I tried to make sure they were tonally different colors. So I've gone for an orangish sort of cardboard and a brown khaki wood, and then the garbage bags I've gone with sort of blue garbage bags because that contrasts a lot and stands out more which I reckon works better than black, because black would just be adding another dark colour and not really adding a lot to a, already a fairly neutral uh, coloured piece of scenery. Too many neutral colours just get ignored, like they don't stick out. Like, it's a problem with this big wood barricade here, it's all just wood, 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 and it's all a sort of neutral khaki, so the only thing you really notice is the changes in shape or silhouette, and the sort of shading that I've, that, uh, that I've done, which is just brown, uh, wash and dry brushing. Now this one, this is a bit more interesting. It's got the steel sections, which I figure is some part of dooring or a door or wall or something in some corrugated steel and some bits of plywood. And then the tires on the back and also a few uh, concrete, concrete blocks. So that has a few different colors, but again, you can see it's all very neutral. It, the steel sort of sticks out of it, but the black and gray does not and the wood is it's just there. So that leaves way to a much more interesting colour palette on this barricade. So these are, I figure, like sort of walking or parking barricades. They could be steel. I, I'd say they're steel. Um, I wouldn't think plastic would really stop zombies much. <laughs> so that's blue. And on the other side, you get the blue, you get the wood, and you have the lovely bright traffic cones, which I've done in orange and white. Now, white is also a colour I've put on the um, supply tokens, you can see the white sort of papers. Now I figure it's either cloth or papers, something that's just scattered and lying around in the sort of chaos and confusion of the apocalypse. And the white and blue adds colour to the otherwise bland supply tokens and I reckon brightens up the whole thing. So the mixing of sort of colours and not choosing too many neutral colours, you know, choosing a sort of a cartoony aesthetic. So I, I, I always sort of toe a line between cartoony and realistic painting and colour choices because you can go completely realistic but I find it a bit bland. I mean you can do it well and you can choose subject matters that are realistic and brightly coloured but uh, for something simple and particularly Mantic's The Walking Dead it's based on a cartoon and the cartoony, so the cartoony selection of colours and styles brightens it up a lot and sort of fits the theme, the, the sort of the, the, the cartoon theme of all, of all this sort of artwork and the, the medium, really. Um, so I hope this sort of advice and conversation gives you some inspiration or help into how you'd uh, paint your stuff. And it's, it's all very simple techniques, like I said, base coat, wash, dry brush or layer next. Uh, be careful about what you choose, like I sort of chose to do the blue first because um, that was going to be the biggest section and then dry brush it. Then I did the orange um, and white and then I did the wood last and that was because the brown, you can carefully put the brown where you want it to go and then wash and the wash won't really interfere with the stuff around it. But then when you're dry brushing, uh, that can get everywhere. Now if I dry brush the blue and the blue got everywhere, it'd look really wrong for there to be blue on the orange and blue on the wood. Whereas dry brushing with the sort of khaki off the wood, if that gets onto your orange or your blue, it's very neutral, you barely notice it, and it looks like dirt or even wood dust or damage or something that's happened. So that's a, a little trick you can get away with. It saves you a lot of time and effort. And then obviously, because it's for playing with a fair bit, I varnished it with a sort of matte varnish that's a little glossy, but that doesn't really bother me. Yeah, I hope this helps and gives you some ideas or help on what you're going to do with your Mantix The Walking Dead or any other sort of modern or any other miniature scenery stuff and thanks for watching.